Hello, and welcome to another review. This one is concerning the uh, the Subbox Mini. So uh, before I give you my final thoughts and uh, all those things, uh, let's go down to the desk and have a look at the close-up stuff, and uh, we'll be back here shortly. Right, so here we got the Subbox Mini starter kit. Now it's important to note that the Subbox refers to the entire contents, not the device, okay? So let's take this little sleevey thing off, and as you can see, I've got the white one. And to the change, I've got a lot of black mods, but uh, not any white stuff. So we've got a nice magnetic flap here. Uh, we've got general gubbins there. It contains the, and this is the point I'm trying to make here, it contains a K box mini and a sub tank mini. It does not at any point contain the sub box, okay? Uh, we have uh, two OCC heads, uh, 0.5 and 1.5. We have an RBA coil times two. We have an RBA base times one. A manual, uh, some screws, a screwdriver, some Japanese cotton and USB cable. And we've got some cautionary notes there about, yeah. Do not smoke the Subbox Mini more frequently. What? Why do you not smoke it? And what do you mean more frequently? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, so we've got the usual gubbins there. It tells you how to operate the device. Got some stickers. Not entirely sure what these are for. Uh, if I find out, I'll put it in the video. But, uh, it might actually say in the uh, in the manual. Well, I've not actually looked at it. But yeah, stickers. Entirely sure they're an Ada. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we've got the device itself. So here is the, the K-Box Mini. Not the Subbox, it's a K-Box Mini. Okay, and uh, we have the uh, the mini sub tank, the new design. Excuse my hands in the way, which is all color coded. And then inside the barge, we have a lack of pointy thing. We have some cotton and screws and miscellaneous bits and bobs. There we go. Oh look, we got a white drip tip. I didn't know about that. That's cute. Yeah, so we've got a white drip tip as well. Uh, we have the 1.5 ohm head and we have the rebuildable section as well. And a USB charging cable in the matching white. So let's just move all this to one side. Try not to cast a shadow over it. Right. This is what we're interested in, isn't it? Predominantly, we're interested in this little doohickey. Very simple. Not quite as simple as the original K-Box. But simple. In fact, let's have a side-by-side -side comparison with the K-Box. He says, removing the atomizer from the top. Here is the K-Box. So we can see that the uh, the K-Box is a bit on the taller side, probably around about just under a centimetre, I'd say. Um, pretty much on a par. Uh, slightly, slightly less in the actual uh, depth there, but uh, not really much to be honest. And uh, height-wise, yeah. uh, height-wise, width-wise, there's not really an awful lot in it to be honest. Weight-wise, uh, pretty similar. This has got a battery in mind, and this hasn't, so this weighs pretty much the same as this with a battery. But this is an aluminium construction, I believe. So uh, right, so let's just go over this then. So we have a 510 connector here, and it is not spring-loaded at all, which is a bit of a shame, but there we go. We have a battery cover, which is held on by magnets, and as you can see there, the positive is at the bottom. I, I presume this has got reverse uh, battery protection, but you know I've not tried it. But it's held on by four relatively powerful magnets, and that's clipped back on quite nicely. On the bottom there we've got our uh, CE mark and whatever. Uh, on this side we've got nothing. On this side we've got Kangatech. And on this end we have the uh, the bits and bobs. So we've got the screen there, we've got the button, we've got the up and down, and uh, we've got the USB charging port. So let's just go ahead and pop a battery in here. Remember that positive down. So you will notice, as soon as I put the battery in, that way up, it turns on pretty quick. Uh, one group I have got with this actually is when I first powered it up out of the box it was set at 50 watts and it was sealed in the box 
Uh, I would prefer it if it was say uh, about 10 or something, you know, factory default settings. But there we go. So uh, if you try and fire it without an atomizer on, it says not, it says 9.9 .9 and flashes at me. Uh, we can adjust our wattage. It seems to do. You hold it down and it will do, uh, say zero to nine or nine down to zero in point one increments, and then after it's done those ten, it will, it will, or it will scroll quickly through the. Uh, you know the actual wattage as opposed to the points. There is no round robining, so uh, but you you can get to where you want to go pretty quick. So uh, let's just take it up to maximum, which is fifty, and down to minimum, which I believe to be seven. There we go. So you you've got the your fine control here, and then you hold it down, and it counts up ten, and then rockets up. So I've been using this at around about thirty five. There we go. So it's pretty easy to hit the target once you've got the uh, the hang of it. You've got a battery charge level there. We also have a it's currently showing zero point zero volts, but that will show the uh, actual voltage being used to achieve at the set wattage. So. Um, yeah, uh, not a spring-loaded connector, which is a bit weird because the original K-Box, which I've now just put somewhere and I can't find it, oh, right there, uh, is spring-loaded. Uh, so if I can make this so you can see it. Do -do 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 -do. Can we get focus? Look at that, we can get focus. So if I was to... Um, as you can see, that goes up and down with ease. So why they've taken that feature away on the Mini, I really don't know. I mean, I grant you the Mini is designed really for the Subtank Mini, and that's it. Uh, and I can't see myself actually using anything else with it, ever. Let's get myself back in focus there. So, uh, but yeah, it screws on. And one thing I do like about this, actually... So let's screw this down till it stops. That pretty much lines up that air hole there. It's a little bit off to the side, but I could slacken it off a little bit. There we go. So yeah, I mean that lines up quite nicely. So for the OCDs out there, I quite like that. Um, now I have to say this puts me in mind of uh, Stormtroopers and Star Wars. It's got that lovely 70s sort of uh, sci-fi look about it. Uh, this is if someone's got on a stormtrooper, wax it in a blender, melted it down, and remoulded it into this. It's very sharp, I think. It looks lovely. But, uh, yeah. Here then is the new version of the sub tank mini, uh, and it looks. I, I really like the look of this. Uh, available in black and red as well. Um, on the outside, nothing really changed. It's just got this coating. Um, Internally, it's it's identical to the sub tanks. Notice there's a bit of juice slitching around in there. But internally, there's no difference there. There's actually some coating on the uh, the uh, top here, air intake as well. Now, according to Kanga, this is a ceramic coating, uh, a food grade ceramic coating, so it shouldn't present any issues. How durable this finish is, I I don't know. Uh, only time will tell on that one. Uh, but it appears to be the same finish as on the uh, the K-Box Mini as well, so it's, it matches very, very well. Uh, yeah, you, you've got your standard air hole options here. So wide open, tight, and slightly less tight. I appreciate you can't really see that very well because of the reflection, but uh, yeah, it's the same as it was before. Uh, it's a fairly stiff uh, airflow control ring, you're not going to turn it accidentally. Drip tip, it's a Delrin drip tip this time around as opposed to the metal ones on the uh, on the sub tanks previously. But I've had no real issues with uh, popping anything else on there. He says, this always happens on camera. Trust me, it does go on. There we go, so that pops on there quite nicely as well. So no real problems there, but to be honest I quite like the uh, the stock black drip tip. It's 
it's not that wide a bore. It looks like it from the top, but when you actually get down to the, uh, the actual uh, hole on the 510, not that deep. Uh, it matches up pretty much with the hole in there, to be honest. It's wide enough, at least for me. Uh, so, yeah, I like that. I mean, it sits in there fairly sturdily. It doesn't really wobble around too much. Yeah, Maybe I would have preferred a metal one, or if they're concerned about heat transfer, maybe uh, some sort of heat sink or something. But, uh, yeah, there we go. So, uh, nice fetching black O-rings there to completely look. Not bad. Okay, so core comparisons. We've got here, uh, on my right, we've got... This is the rebuildable head from the original uh, sub-tank uh, Mini and the sub-tank Plus, not the rebuildable head from the, uh, the sub-tank 25, the first version. We have here uh, an OCC coil from a sub-tank Plus, the first version. And on the left here, we've got the OCC coil from the new sub-tank Mini. And uh, there we have the, uh, the rebuildable deck from the new sub-tank Mini. So, Let's pop these to one side, out of the way. First thing I want to look at is there is a little bit of a change. Now on my right here is the original version of the OCC coil and you can see there that is a, uh, a horizontal coil. On my left is the, the coils from the new version of the OCC and that is a vertical coil with cotton on the outside. Uh, there is a difference in the way these vape, and I'll cover that later on in the uh, the vape time section of this video. But uh, this is a bit more interesting now. This is so. This is the original rebuildable head, and this is unused. So this is as it comes with, uh, you know, a uh, pre-installed coil. So we see there we got two of the uh, juice channels, which, to be fair, I've found fine for. Uh, I've used 80% VG juices and these these things and I've not had any trouble. But they obviously thought it needed a bit of a redesign. So what we got here then is the uh, the new version, which has a screw holding things in place. It's a really really small screw. So what we need to do is just slack this off a little bit. Not too much. Maybe a little bit more. So instead of unscrewing the uh, the chimney section from the base, you just pop it off, which is good. Um, but other than that, it pretty much remains unchanged on the deck, but with the notable exception of no juice channels there. What we've got instead, we've got two hoofing great holes. Look at that. So instead of bringing up the uh, the juice now like a K fund does uh, from the bottom, you basically need to stuff some wick to cover up these holes. A uh, bit more like the Typhoon actually. So uh, I shall be building that as well. Uh, to, to be fair, you don't need to tighten the screw up too much because I mean that holds it on fairly well. Uh, it's not going to spin anywhere. It was only screw it down. It's going to be okay. Um, otherwise, what we got here? I mean, yeah, everything seems pretty much the same on the the airflow and the base there. So there's no real difference. So there's a couple of changes. Okay, so let's have a closer look at the uh, the RBA section now. As you can see, I've uh, pre-threaded some cotton on this. I've uh, decided to stick with the stock coil that comes uh, installed, just to see what it's like. You never know. Uh, so what I've done, I've, uh, I've already threaded some cotton on here. I mean, rebuilding these things is simplicity itself. There is a guide included in the kit, uh, but it's a real joy to do. If you've done one of the sub previous sub-tanks, it's fine. But because of the way these screws are set up, it's actually really easy to trap your wires. So, what we need to do... Um, I'm winging this because it's the first time I've done it. I presume what we need to do is tuck these up in here. Like so. And then uh, we need to find the little hole. I'm going to tighten it down. We probably don't really need to, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so I've got a massive amount of cotton sticking out the top of it. Okay, right. It all lines up quite nicely with the holes there, so that's all good. So that's one good thing about this uh, little doohickey here. It makes sure it's all lined up quite nicely. So uh, can't really knock that. 
Let's get some skizzers and uh, let's give that a trim. So I probably don't need that much cotton. And I'll get myself a, uh, a pointy, a flat pointy thing, and I'm going to just tease this down over the holes. Oh, okay, to be honest, this looks really easy to do. Oh, that was painless. Oh, a little bit more there. There we go. And uh, as you can see, the cotton sort of uh, popped out ever so slightly on these holes there. That could stand to go in a little bit more. Not much. I think that'll do nicely. So what I'll do at this point is I'll get the juice. Uh, I'll get the same juice, obviously, that I've been using with the OCC coils. Uh, that means I don't have to clean the sub-tank out, and uh, it means I'll get a decent comparison. Let's give this a little bit of a priming. There we go. Nice, and uh, we'll just pop the top on. It really is that simple. I like that. That's really good. Uh, it's a lot easier than making sure you're not blocking up your channels too much, that sort of thing. You just literally make it so proud. How does a stand up touch with vaping? I don't know. Maybe it'll gurgle. Who knows? But uh, we'll see during the vape time. Okay, so we've had a look at the, uh, the sub box in its box. Uh, we've had a look at the contents of the box. We've had a look at the RBA section. We've had a little close up look at the, uh, the K box mini. We've had a little close up look at the actual sub tank mini. And we've looked at the OCC coils and the verticality of them all. So all that said, how does it vape? Not bad. Um, 30 watts at the moment, it's a, an 80% VG juice. There's one thing about this though, and that is there's a ramp up time. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, as soon as I put this in my mouth, I will press the fire button. And uh, what I'll do, I'll keep my hand here, and I'll raise it when the power goes up, okay? Now, this is a K-Box original. It doesn't do that. There's also another thing I've noticed as well. Um, this is at 25 watts. Now, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself here. That's... Um, Let's take this sub tank just to rule this out and put it on the K box, okay? Do -do -do, do -do -do -do. A little bit juicy here, so I'm just going to clean that up. There we go, right. Let's pop this on the K box. Okay, here we go. And that's fine. So it's not the type of coil that's that's making a difference. And just to uh, illustrate a point, here is a sub tank plus, which I'm going to put on the K box mini. Did it again. Here we go. Now, okay, so it's definitely the K-Box Mini that's doing the um, the power ramp up thing. The other thing I've noticed um, is that, now you would think these would be pretty much the same electronically inside, wouldn't you? But, but they're not. Um, now, I've got this set at 30 watts and I've got this set at 25. Now, 30 watts on here feels about the same as 25 on the K-Box. It's weird, so um, I mean, take that as you is. I, I don't know if the the original K box is more accurate, or the original K box is overpowered. That I don't know. I don't have the equipment in order to uh, to actually measure this. But it does appear that I need to uh, put the power up on the K box mini higher than on the K box in order to achieve the same quality of vape. Okay. 
So I, I really don't know what's going on there. But um, so I don't know which one's right, if indeed any are. Okay. But uh, that's just my experience. It's, it's no means a deal break. I mean, the fact that this goes up an extra ten watts higher than the K box does kind of compensates for that anyway. So all you really got to do is just adjust this to your preference. Don't really rely on the numbers, but then you should never really rely on the numbers anyway on what you're vaping. Just adjust it to what you prefer. Anyway, that's that all out of the way, okay? Uh, I want to go over the uh, the OTC heads a little bit more. Because um, there's two things I didn't really touch on in the close-up section. Now, in my left hand, la 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 la, which will be on your right, and in my right hand, which will be on your left. So on my left hand, I have an original OCC coil head. And in my right hand, I have the newer type. Now there's two differences here. You can see in the original one, there's a, um, what should we call it, a, a seam running across here. On the new one, that doesn't appear to exist. Well, it doesn't, there's no appearing about it. So there's that, and then there's also the, uh, the size of the, uh, the wick holes as well. You'll notice that on the newer one, they're slightly wider. They're chamfered, but ever so slightly wider at the base of the chamfer there. Okay, so um, now rebuilding the, the original OCC heads was a doddle. What you could do, you could uh, get a couple of pairs of pliers, and you can just twist this and pop the top off and get your gubbins out. You can't do that with the new ones, okay? So it appears the press fit is actually at the bottom. I, focus is going to be a pain here. Um, but the actual press fit, you see where that, that silicon ring is at the base there? Just here. Now, it appears the press fit is around there, and there's a really not a lot of metal holding this together. So I would guess that if I was to get some pliers and try to pop this off, I would break something. Now, this is a, a brand new head, um, and the one I've got in here, I've only been using for uh, a day or two, so I'm not really ready to try and pull one apart yet, but uh, I, I will update as and when, okay? So all that being said, I would go out on a limb at this moment in time and say you can't really rebuild the, uh, the newer OCC heads. Someone might be able to do it, um, and I will give it a go given time but right now I don't think it's really a good idea but to be honest they're pretty cheap anyway it's like what a tenner or so for, for five they last a while you know it's not really a problem so yeah I just want to point out that in the time between me actually filming all the close-up sections and now it's been a couple of days so um, I, I've had a chance to really sort of uh, get a feel for this device and I'm What's happened to my colour? Oh, I don't know. It's just ambient light. That's what it is. Oh, I've suddenly gone warm. Anyway, let's carry on. Um, it's, given me, it's given me a chance to get a feel for the device and uh, how it vapes. Now, I've been mostly using, actually, the rebuildable head. Now, I've just put the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the OCC coil in just for the uh, start of this segment. And just so you can see how it performs, really. But... Um, Let's take this out and we put the uh, the rebuildable section in now. Let's use a bit of tissue so I can get myself all juicy. Now, and you, you put these in the same way as you do with all the other ones, you know, you just undo the base and screw that on and blah 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 blah. Uh, no real problems there. So uh, let's just pop the uh, the new head in there. I'll say new. It's been it's been bedded in now, but uh... okay, here we go. Now, I've not adjusted the wattage. It's still on thirty. Um, now I've had zero dry hits with this rebuildable uh, head section it, it's working really really well uh, as I already mentioned it's an 80% VG juice it's it's pretty good flavor is good um, there's no real different to the, uh, the rebuildable sections on the previous sub tanks to be honest with you it just wicks a bit better um, you know I, I, I can actually uh, bear to put this up let's put it up to 40 watts 
There we are, 40 watts there for you. No problems at all. So then, in regards to the durability of this device, now I've been using this in my daily driver since I've got it pretty much. Um, you know, because I really, I, re I really need to sort of get a, a feel for it. I need to see if there's any quirks. So I've been using this as my daily driver for a couple of days, and I've used nothing else. Uh, well, I've occasionally used this just for comparison's sake, but uh, yeah. No problems at all. Um, battery life has been fine. It is, as I'd expect, say, uh, running a device between 30 and 40 watts on a, on a, on a 0.5 ohm coil. It lasts as long as I would expect it to. Um, USB charging has been relatively quick. I've got no idea what the actual uh, draw on it is um, on the USB, so I don't have a device to measure. You know, I really should buy some stuff. I suppose there's vaping equipment and cameras. But... Um, yeah, it's it's been working well. Uh, I, I put it on charge overnight as well. Um, you know, while I've been sitting there watching telly, I've been vaping while it's on charge. It's no problems at all, really. You know, and I've tried different batteries in it, all that sort of thing. Um, at the moment, what have I got in here? I've got uh, I've got an LG HE2 in here at the moment. So um, yeah, it, it's. It's been performing fine. There's been no scratches performed on it. The paint has held up quite nicely. Um, you know, I honestly I can't remember if I actually mentioned it in the close-up sections or not. But uh, the paint on this is a, is a ceramic-based paint, apparently. Um, apparently, food-grade safe, so uh, shouldn't really cause any issues with your liquids. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I can't, it's, it's, there's been a couple of days I recorded that part, so I can't remember. But uh, yeah, really no issues so far. Um, actually, one thing I haven't covered really is I, I covered some of the button functionality, but I didn't actually point out two features. Uh, one is the lock. So if I give it five measured clicks, let's try that again. No, you're going to make a liar out of me, aren't you? There we go. Five clicks off. Okay, so that disappears. There we go. And five clicks again. There it goes. Kangatek. Kink. And we're ready to vape. Um, also, if I was. You, you can't lock the wattage in, okay? But uh, if you was to hold down the, uh, the plus and minus buttons, like so, it flips the screen over, like that. And I've adjusted the wattage down by 0.6 because I didn't hold them there I flipped up the right way up again at least for me um, so yeah that's a bit of a negative you can't lock the wattage in but um, that's pretty much it to be honest with you the buttons do require fairly deliberate press um, I've not had this adjust itself in my pocket yet it probably will at some point but uh, I mean, the buttons themselves, they feel pretty solid. They are plastic construction. Uh, the fire button does wobble ever so slightly. The, uh, the plus and minus buttons, they stay very solid. But it's got a nice positive action to it. Doesn't require a massive amount of force to use, but it, it requires some. It's not just a feather like touch sensitive button, you know. Um, so, my final thoughts on it then. Well. It's £55 for the kit. Uh, to be honest with you, I'd like to have seen maybe a battery included in that price as well. Or maybe an extra £5, you know, so £60 and a battery. The place I purchased it from did have the option of including a battery for an extra nine quid, um, Which is a bit expensive for a battery, I think. But there we go, that's the going rate, I suppose. Um, but so, so that's the one thing missing. I mean, it's, it's designed as a starter kit, really, for sub ohmers, or well, you don't have to go sub ohming. Okay, I mean, that's actually get to the point here. Uh, if, if I adjust the draw to the smallest one, I know this is something that's mentioned on Timmy Talkings the other week. Um, I'll pop the wattage down as well. Let's put it to a more pedestrian twenty watts. I realise that some people are still quite high. But uh, yeah, so I've got it on the smallest air hole setting, and now, of course that is repeating on both sides.
and that is a mouth to lung draw and that is a very tight draw for me okay really is um, so that's increased that ever so slightly to the second hole I mean, there's three settings basically so this this the second largest or the middle section uh, section so you can see there still a respectable amount of vapor and that's a more comfortable after lung uh, draw for me the flavor has increased some simply by using that section I mean uh, it tightens up the airflow and it gives me a bit more flavor so you mouth to lungers out there you might have some uh, some mileage out of this as well but for me I prefer it on the wide open section now you can adjust of course the wide open section slightly so if I if I halve that like so uh, well, it's probably a bit less than half but uh, and that allows me with some effort a mouth to lung uh, sorry a, a, a full lung hit but if, if I open it right up And it's not as airy as the, uh, the full-on Subtank Plus. But it is fairly airy. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking for maybe a, a map to lung tank as well, this, this I would say, would fit the bill. Yeah, you, you got a fair level of adjustment there as well. So, um, yeah, it's not really just aimed at the sub -ohmers. In fact, you get a 1.5 uh, ohm head with it as well. That means that you can... Uh, yeah, yeah you, you you can tailor it a little bit more and the fact you've got a rebuildable section i mean granted the coil supplied are 0.5 ohms you can wind your own i mean canthal is pretty inexpensive you know so uh maybe it'd be nice if they included a length of that with the kit but uh, yeah all you really need to get yourself started is a battery and uh and some juice uh it will take, I mean, you don't have to use high VG juice in this either. I just happened to be because I wanted to test how well it wicked. Um, and actually, I didn't actually include, use the included cotton in this. I actually used some uh, some rayon cotton. Because it was just easier for me to use. It's right there and I'll just pop a bit off and put it in. Uh, yeah, I, I'm happy with that. I'm still at 20 watts actually, to be honest, and it's not bad. Hmm, I've got nothing that time. There we go. I'll tell you what, let's put it up to the full 50, shall we? I've not done it yet. Do, 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 do. Takes a little bit of time. Here we go then. Not bad, I'm starting to feel the, uh, the flavour drop off, to be honest though. Uh, it's probably a bit too high for this coil. So let's put it back down to, let's put it to 35. I dare say I have a different building now, I could probably get the 450 out of it, but uh, I like to try and review these things as they come, you know. Hence, I didn't rebuild the coil myself, I used the stock one that came with it. <coughs> so, yeah. So, 55 quid then for the kit. And for me, I think looks-wise, it is superb. I mean, it's also available in black, uh, so the white parts would be black and the black parts in here would be red. Um, maybe I'd have liked the Kanga Tech to actually be in black as opposed to silver. You know, I mean, you've got three colours going on. Whatever, that's just nitpicking, isn't it? Um, it's, it's a very good-looking device, to my mind. It's got a lovely 70s sci-fi look about it. I, I really enjoy the look of it. Uh, it's it's lovely. It really is. I, I, I find myself just sort of putting it down on the table and go, oh, yeah, uh, that's quite nice. I like that. So, um, hmm. I think this has gone on long enough, really, isn't it? If you haven't guessed, I like it. I recommend it. I think it's a very good device. Um, I think it caters for a wide, very uh, a varying range of people. Uh, if you like your mouth to lung, if you like a lung hit, it's got you covered. Okay, um, it's a good price. It's all inclusive. Just needs a battery and some juice. It's pretty good. Anyway, cheers.